Hey, what's up everybody? Dustin here with Rocky Mountain ATV MC, and today I'm gonna to show you how to change a tire on a dirt bike. A lot of guys struggle when it comes to changing out their dirt bike tires, so today I'm gonna to show you a method that is quick and easy. To change out the tire on your dirt bike, you will need some tire irons. I like to use three tire irons when changing my tire, and I'll show you here in just a minute. You will wanna have a B tool, and if you're really particular about your rims and you don't wanna scratch them up, you can get yourself some rim protectors. All right, so today I'm gonna to be changing out this rear tire, and I'll be using a Tusk tire changing stand. Now what I really like about this is it keeps me off of the garage floor, really saves my lower back and as well as my knees. Now you can change your tire on the ground. This is just kind of a personal preference of mine. Now the first thing that we're gonna to wanna to do is let the air out of the tire. To do that, we're gonna remove the valve stem cap and then remove the Schrader valve. Next, you can remove the valve stem nut. Now we want to loosen the rim lock. When loosening the rim lock nut, back it off as far as you can without removing it. All right, so now that we've got that out of the way, the next step is to break the bead from the rim. Now to do that, we're gonna press down on 180 degrees away from the rim lock. Once we get it started with our body weight, we can work our way around with our tire iron and pry it away from the rim. Now if you're not able to break the bead and get it started, just by using your body weight, you can wedge your tire iron inside of there and then pry it off of the rim. All right, so now that we're done with this side, we're gonna flip it over and do the exact same thing to the other side. All right, so once you've been able to break the tire's bead loose from the rim, I wanna to talk to you about the most important part when it comes to changing a tire. Now on the rim itself right here, we've got what's called the drop center. Now this is crucial when it comes to changing your tire because on the tire itself, along the bead inside are steel cords and they do not stretch. So when it comes to taking the tire off of the rim, opposite the side that you're working, you're gonna to wanna to push down and make sure you have as much of that bead inside of that drop center area, again, except for the area that you're trying to work. And this is going to allow the tire to shift just enough so that we can work the bead of the tire up and over the rim. All right, so now that you all understand that, the first step we're going to do to get the tire off the rim is to lube up the bead. Now we're just going to spray some lube inside. And the reason for using lube when removing the tire from the rim is, well, it's gonna help us slide it off. It's gonna make it a lot easier to get our tire spoons in there to grab the bead and work it up over the rim. Now the tire lube that we're using is from Yamaha and it works really well and it evaporates very quickly. All right, so now that we've got the bead of the tire lubed up, we can begin the process of removing the tire from the rim. Now, I personally like to start just a little ways away from the rim lock, and I like to use three tire irons. You can use two, but three makes it better. Now I'm going to insert these in between the tire and the rim, and I'm going to be using the side of the tire iron that's got the curve, the curve to it. That's gonna be facing down. That way we can reach in, we can grab the bead of the tire, and then work it up over the edge of the rim. Now, as I insert these in there, I'm gonna be making sure they're about five inches apart from each other. And then I'm gonna take the center iron, and I'm gonna to start to apply some pressure. Now, as I do this, on the opposite side, I'm gonna push down on the side wall of the tire, maybe apply a little more pressure with the tire iron. And this way, I'm gonna make sure that we get as much of the tire's bead into the drop center. Now, as you begin to push on it some more, you can see it's gonna to start to suck as much of the tire's bead into the drop center. So then we can work this over. Then I can begin to work one of the other spoons over, and then the third. Now see, I'm having a little difficulty right here with this last part, so I'm gonna just double check to make sure that I've got the tire into the drop center as much as possible, and then just work it over. Now we can remove, remove our spoons, and then we can go about five, six inches away from where the beads starting to work its way over the tire. I'm gonna work my way to the right of the rim lock and just start working off the tire. All right, so now that we've got this side of the bead worked over, we're gonna flip it over and do the exact same thing to the other side. All right, so we're gonna add some lube. All right, so now that we've got this side of the tire's bead lubed up, we can begin the removal process. Now, I like to start just a little ways away from our rim lock, 
This side's a lot easier to remove, so I'm just gonna be using two tire irons. I'm gonna place them in between the tire and the rim, about four or five inches apart from each other. Now, as I begin to apply pressure to the tire iron, as you can see, I'm also keeping this one, keeping pressure on so it doesn't fall out with my body. So as we apply pressure, make sure that on the other side, that the tire's bead is all the way into the drop center as far as possible. Then we can begin to work the bead up over the rim. Now I'm gonna place my tire iron underneath the sprocket. Now be careful when doing this, depending on your tire, it might be a little hard for you to do that and it might flip up and hit you in the face. That's why it's always good to wear safety glasses when you're changing your tire. Work the other tire iron over. And I'm gonna take about a three, four inch bite. And then just keep working the bead over the rim. All right, so now that we've got both sides of the bead worked over the rim, we're now going to stand the tire up. All right, so I wanna have the valve stem down towards the bottom area of the tire. Then we're gonna push down on the rim and then we can begin to peel the tire off of the rim. And once we've got the tire peeled from the rim, we can pull the rim from the tube. All right, so now that we're ready to install the rear tire, there's something that we need to check first. And that is if your tire is directional. If it is, you need to make sure that it lines up with the direction of rotation on your wheel. Next, we can lube the inside diameter of our tire. All right, so now we can get ready to put the tube inside of the tire. Now, I've already installed my Schrader valve. Now, as you can see, we've got just enough air in it so that the tube will hold its shape, it has some body to it. Now, what this is going to do for us is help to prevent us from getting pinch flats when we go to install the tire onto the rim. All right, so now that we've got our tube installed into the tire, we can begin the mounting process of getting it onto the rim. Now, to start, we're gonna lube up this side of the tire's bead. Now the next thing we want to do is look for the hole in the rim that's going to receive the valve stem from the tube. Now we're going to pull the tube up just a little bit. So this is going to help us get it started into the rim. We'll locate that hole and slide valve stem in and through it. Now once you get this through, you're going to take your valve stem nut and we're going to just barely thread it onto the valve stem. And then we can begin working the tire onto the rim. For this, we're gonna be using the curved tire iron. This curve in the tire iron makes it a lot easier when it comes to getting the tire onto the rim. Now, I'm just taking pretty small bites with this. Don't need to take any huge bites out of it. We're gonna work our way up to the rim lock. All right, so once we've gotten to this point, we're gonna pull the tire out of the tire changing stand and set it on the ground so that we can work the bead up and over the rim lock and get it set into place. All right, for this next part, we're gonna have the tire on the ground. We're gonna be using these two smaller tire irons. We're gonna place them on both sides of the rim lock. We're gonna lift up on the tire's bead and then slip it over the rim lock. All right, so once we get to this part, we can press up on the rim lock. And then we can release our tire irons. And now we've got the bead of the tire sitting in the right spot. All right, so now that we've got the other side of the bead into place, we can now begin to work on this side of the tire. Now we're gonna spray down the bead with lube first. All right, so once we've got that side of the bead lubed up, we're gonna start just to the right of our valve stem. We're gonna use our two smaller tire irons and we're gonna insert them into the wheel about six inches apart from each other. So once we've got those in place, we can go ahead and begin to work the tire over onto the rim. Then we're going to take our Tusk motorcycle tire bead tool and we're gonna to place this in to the rim it's gonna press down on our bead and then insert onto one of our spokes. Now what this tool is going to do is it's going to aid in keeping the bead down into the drop center as we begin to work this side of the tire's bead back onto the rim. Now once we've got that in place, 
we're gonna work our way to the rim lock. Just taking small bites, placing the wrench back into the rim, maybe about four inches apart from the last one. This is where you need to be patient and take your time so that you don't accidentally pinch the tube. Now the other cool thing about the Tusk bead tool is that it helps keep the tire's bead seated onto the rim as we begin to work our way around the wheel. Now once we get close to the rim lock, we're going to press the rim lock in towards the tube. Just take some small bites. And once we get to there, we'll grab our other tire iron, take another small bite. Then we should have it seated correctly underneath the rim lock. And once you get to this spot here, as you can see, we can't really get a tire iron in there. So you should be able to just press on the sidewall of the tire and it should pop over the rim. All right, so once we get our bead tool removed, we can now inflate the tire and seat the bead. Now when you're filling your tire and seating the bead, make sure to check the sidewall of your tire and reference the max pressure and do not exceed it. Now, now once you've got the tire inflated, you want to inspect the bead just to make sure that you've got a nice uniform bead on both sides of the tire. So if everything's looking good, we can go ahead and set our rim lock. All right, so once we've got the rim lock nice, snugged, and tightened down, we can then set our tire pressure. And when you're setting your tire pressure, set it to your desired PSI. Then we can install our valve stem cap. Once that's been seated, we can then bring the valve stem nut up to the valve stem cap and just kind of snug it on. And that's it. That's really all there is to it when it comes to changing out a tire on a dirt bike. Now, hopefully the process that we've shown you here today really helps to clear up some confusion for you and makes changing out your tires a lot easier in the future. Now, if you have any questions as to what we've done here today, feel free to leave a comment below and we'll be sure to get an answer back to you. I'm Dustin with Rocky Mountain. Thanks for watching and keep the wrenches turning.